Hi guys, I'm Sean Dobson. Welcome to Bikes and Bushcraft. Hey guys, Sean from Bikes and Bushcraft. Today I'm going to do a roadside review on some riding gear. This is kind of some minimal gear. In Ohio we don't have uh, helmet laws, so you don't always have to wear a helmet. And the majority of cruiser riders, uh, touring riders, probably don't wear helmets. This is my recommendation for the minimal amount of gear that you're going to want to have on while you're out on the road. It's going to keep you comfortable and give you the, a minimal amount of safety. The first thing I'm going to recommend is a beanie. Now, when it's 90 degrees, you're not going to want to wear a beanie. I get that. Uh, bandana, I'm not real big about putting those on my head. So most of the time, I'll still wear the beanie. Um, I take it off when I'm off the bike, obviously, because I don't have the wind to cool my head. But just a simple beanie, nothing real special about it. It's got the Willie G theme on it and the Harley Davidson on the side. The majority of my stuff is going to have that theme on it because that's what I like. The next item on the list is going to keep you pretty comfortable while you're riding and it was suggested to me a few weeks ago by a more experienced rider and that's a bandana. This is going to go on your face bandit style. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, that's like that. Normally I'll keep mine down below my nose, so it's going to give a coverage something like this. Alright, and then you tuck the bottom of it down into your jacket or your shirt, and that's going to keep you from swallowing a bug at about 70 miles an hour, which is a fairly uncomfortable experience as quite a few of us have known. The reason why I like the Harley bandanas is because they're 95% cotton and 5% spandex. So I can pull it tight to make sure that it's going to secure to my face and not move around, but it's not going to strangle me while I'm riding with it. And it'll move with my head as I turn it and uh, keeps everything in place. Our next item is a jacket. Now there are mesh jackets out there that you can wear in hot weather to really warm weather. You can slide soft armor in those for your elbows, shoulders, and back. And that's a great option when, during the summer months. Now this morning it was 52 degrees on my way to work. This is the Harley Crossroads waterproof fleece jacket, okay? This is also windproof. At 52 degrees and approximately 70 miles an hour on average, I was not cold at all in my upper torso. My chaps get a little bit cold, but that's not a big deal. Uh, do the lining in them, no problem at all. This particular jacket has sealed zippers, so your pockets stay waterproof. It also has a uh, hood that comes with it that I do not have attached because I don't like riding with a hood. The uh, lining on the inside is good to go. One thing that is nice, it has this little thumb slot and the cuffs, so you can slip your thumb in and then put your gloves over that and uh, I'll show you that here in a little bit with it on. So that is a uh, definite nice jacket. You know, it's got the uh, reflective Harley Davidson Willie G skull on the back of it. I hear a lot of guys say if you're going to ride a motorcycle, you don't wear black. You know, plenty of the clothing out there that's black does have reflective stripes on it. So maybe the answer to that is if you're going to wear black clothing, Try and get something with a reflective stripe. So the last item on the list is gloves. I'm assuming the majority of us wear gloves. Uh, these are leather gloves, pretty much kind of a standard thing. You know, they've got a little bit of uh, padding in the knuckles. You know, if you get hit by a bug or a rock, that might help. I don't know, the fairing on my bike covers my hands, so I really don't have to worry about it too much. But uh, a good set of leather gloves is pretty important. Guys, mechanics wear gloves are not riding gloves, okay? If you have full rubber grips, they may not be bad. Mine are not full rubber, which you're going to see here in a minute. We'll go ahead and go over to the bike, and uh, you guys can check out the Dragon Lady. Because like every other guy, I like to show my bike off. But I don't have full rubber on my grips, so anything that doesn't have good grips is going to slide on that uh, chrome and mechanics wear are the worst gloves for riding on my bike that I have ever found okay full leather is the only way to go at least in my situation if you have something that works for you differently 
hey, that's great, you know, go with what you can. All right, but a good quality leather glove is also going to protect you in a fall much better than a cloth glove that has leather stitched to the outside of it. Okay, so that's another consideration to make. So give me a second to uh, reposition the camera and we'll go ahead and go over the bike. Okay guys, so another one of the things on the list is a good pair of chaps. Chaps are going to protect you from rocks, bugs, things like that. Weather 50 degrees and above, if they're not lined, is about your lower end of protection. If you're going anything over 30 miles, you're going to need probably a lined set of chaps. Okay, so the last thing on the list is going to be a good pair of boots to ride in. Now, I do own Harley boots. The majority of the time, I ride in my combat boots, okay? These combat boots have an additional piece of uh, leather over the toes, so it gives me a little bit more protection on the uh, heel shift. I don't have the ankle padding like I do in my Harley boots, okay? But I do still wear them because if I'm going out, I'm going to be hopping off the bike doing some bushcraft stuff. My Harley boots don't perform as well in the woods as my combat boots do. I could throw the combat boots in the other saddle bag. That's a possibility. Most of the time I just choose not to. So what I've got is a, a 103 motor. It's a, a V-twin obviously. Uh, typical Harley Street Glide. Um, I've got some extras on her. On top we have the 11 inch windshield tented. Uh, it gives you some protection, but it still allows for some air. Obviously, you can see there are plenty of bugs on it because it hasn't been washed, and I've been out riding her quite a bit. So moving around to the right side, the air filter, which you'll see here, is a uh, air filter by Performance Machine, which is a uh, pretty nice air filter. I like it. Um, that's probably going to be the theme for a couple of other extras that I go with. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a nice deal. Also, have rear crash bar. That way, when I do lay it down, the uh, paint job doesn't get messed up. And, obviously, I'm going to say when I do because we all know that it happens. Okay? Also, there, you see the uh, leather bag. That's good for, you know, if you're stopping by the gas station, pick up a couple of bottles of water or a pop or something like that you can put it in there it's got a softer lining so you can keep your glasses in there uh, kind of a nice little feature the uh, plug right there is for the uh, battery tender in the winter time so moving around to the passenger side we've got a uh, sissy bar on there that's kind of nice if you have a rider the uh, sissy bar also becomes the mount for the tour pack if you get the uh, trunk on it. Uh, that's going to be a later addition that I plan on making, but you know they're not cheap, so it does take a little while. Have the uh, mustache LED lights, and uh, those have the uh, flashers on them. I'll try and indicate those if I can. Most likely, I'm going to have to stand away from the camera and show you that but I'll get it mounted back to the tripod. Uh, we've got the antenna for the radio, the AM FM. On this side I have another leather bag on the rear crash bar. Um, it's not the uh, same style as the other, it's the half bag as far as the compartment goes but that handy little cup holder right there allows me to put my beloved coffee cup in there and I can actually grab that and drink from it while I'm riding. So here we have the hookup for the riding gear. You can put this little cap over the end that weatherproofs it when it's not in use and uh, it just kind of hangs out there. And then we have the latch to move the seat forward and that is the driver's seat. That way you can have a uh, backrest when you're riding. Uh, that is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I love it and I don't think I'll ever own a bike without it again. Now when the passenger is getting on the bike um, they may be worried about the seat. This leans forward all the way so it can be out of their way when they're getting on and of course it comes up 
It's got a really strong mount. You're not going to break anything. Um, it's it's a great addition to the bike. So moving on to the console, we have the push button fuel door. That's pretty convenient not having to get the key out of your pocket. There's the uh, CD door for the CD on the uh, radio. So we've got the auxiliary cable here. It runs over to my phone mount on my uh, bike. This houses my life proof case. Uh, life proof is great for the bike, um, great for the bush. So you really can't beat that. So the grips I was telling you about, you've got some rubber here, uh, give you a little bit more grip, and then you know, you're chromed out uh, grip itself. Have the uh, black control handles, clutch, brake over there. I mean, that's pretty much standard. So one thing that I've found that, as far as I know, is unique to Harley-Davidson is your turn signals. Your left side turn signal is on the left. Your right side turn signal is on the right. So we have the audio switch, which allows me to turn the radio up and down. We have the mode and select here on the other side, which is going to be for switching between AM, FM, uh, turning your bands up and down. You can go to auxiliary, weather band. We'll go ahead and let you see it on so you can uh, kind of tell. No music's going to play because I've got it in auxiliary right now. So this is switching between. So you have AM, FM, CD, weather band, and auxiliary. Mine's on auxiliary most of the time because all I'm doing is uh, running my phone for my music, which is going into the radio. So that's a nice feature. Um, as you saw the flash there, that is the bike automatically arming the security system. I have the uh, fob for starting the bike in my pocket. Anytime that fob's more than six feet away from the bike, the bike will not start. But should the battery die in the fob, or if you have the fob laying close to the bike and you ride it to the gas station to fuel up, and uh, you figure out that you forgot it, there is a way to override the security system without the fob and I will show you guys that later. So the last item to show you guys is the uh, tea bag set. This is the uh, three bag set, obviously. And here is the uh, Easy Pass, which is awesome for a motorcycle. You don't have to stop. That's great. So the larger center bag, you can keep your uh, sunglasses in there. And uh, I keep my phone in there when I don't have it mounted to the bars. This is a fairly recent addition. And then I keep miscellaneous items in this one. You know gum or whatever I want to get while I'm riding. The only other thing that I forgot to show you guys, and that was because it was on my head, was a good pair of riding glasses, okay? I have both tented and clear glasses. Um, you know, Wiley X is a great uh, set of glasses. Uh, there are others out there, Oakley's, but the main thing you want to get is that... So gas. having that gasket there pushing against your face is going to protect your eyes from small amounts of debris. Not that nothing will ever get up in between the uh, gasket and your face, but, you know, it's going to cut down on it a lot. And as you can see, they uh, flash when you hit the brake. Okay, guys, so obviously no lights on. That's the uh, headlight and driving lights on. And you have high beams, which you guys really can't see very well because it's daylight. So you have right turn signal left turn signal. So for the Harleys to get your hazards to come on, you hit both turn signals at the same time. And that is the 2012 Street Glide, also known as the Dragon Lady. So guys, I appreciate you joining me for this quick roadside review of some minimal safety items and a uh, run through of the bike. I appreciate everything you do. Comments, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, be safe on those bikes and in the bush. Have a great day.